No, I'm definitely playing. I mean, it, it's uh, come on, we out here. You want to come to the game? Yeah. Sitting on the bench. It's not cool. So you're concerned about all the fans wanting to come out? <laughs> of course, always. always. What's your main concern tomorrow, um, physically? I don't have any. I feel, I feel great. You know, it's just uh, it's getting the sea legs underneath, right? Just getting up and down, you know, constantly getting up and down. But I feel in great shape, feel strong, feel healthy. What's uh, impressed you the most about this group so far on these practices? Uh, I mean, it's a hardworking group. The guys really work hard and really committed to it. It's a tough camp, but the guys don't complain. They just work hard. Because it's a preseason game, but obviously it's the same place as a game. What are kind of the things that you measure on? Really? Really? You know, I haven't played in so long. You know, it's just timing, uh, defensive timing, offensive timing. Uh, like that stuff you can't, you can't get back in training. You just got to play. Offensively, with that rhythm, if you do end up not having the ball in your hands as much to, to, to set up the offense and create, is it tougher to get into that rhythm? I don't, I don't understand why <laughs> you guys can't figure this out. Yet. I do not like setting up all. I hate it. <laughs> Phil made me do it years ago, and I had to learn how to do it years ago. Um, I set up the, the triangle. Uh, having played with point guards and uh, playmakers at heart, and D'Angelo is a ridiculous playmaker. I'm, I'm much rather catch and shoot than catch and one, two, three, pull up. So you guys know I like scoring the ball. Why the hell do I like setting off? <laughs> so it's, so it's, it, you can easily get into a rhythm if, it's, if it is a catch and shoot situation. It's not very hard to catch and shoot. You catch it, you let it go. <laughs> they did that a little bit in the USA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you know, it's easy. Man. So was it it's le less work, too. Though. When you don't beat your joints up as much. When you don't have the relationships with these young guys and you've got this many people who you're trying to connect with, you're out there trying to communicate, be you, make the whole thing work, is that something you work through? Well, I mean, it's a generational gap. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, so you know, the universal language is the game. And, you know, these guys, you know, they're really, really thirsty for knowledge. And, you know, we leave practice, we go back to the mill room, and we'll just sit around the table and we'll talk. The other day, we just sat around talking about two, like, two and a half hours. And, I just wanted to know some of the things that I've been through, some of the things that I've learned, some of the things I can help me with. So, you know, the game really connects to something. Who was that? Where was that? It was all the young guys. So it was D'Angelo, it was Clarkson, it was uh, some of our uh, other young kids that are here trying out, making the team. And, uh, the hotel bath is here. And we just sitting around at the table at the hotel, man, just, uh, just talking. That one of the successes then of bringing training camp back out here to Hawaii to get you guys together just off the basketball court? I think so. I think there's a certain level of connectivity when you leave the town and you're out here all together. And, uh, yeah, it's a perfect time to bond. You sit around having lunch after tough practice and you just, uh, you just talk. Because you have a recent commercial or you're saying you know, passing's a necessary evil? Yeah. <laughs> no, serious. It's like, what's your kind of outlook on that with this season? Just the context of you're obviously the guy, but wanting to develop the other guys too. Is there a balance with that? How do you approach it? No, I mean, you, you always try to uh, get the best out of your guys. You know, you try to put them in position to be successful. You know, more so than anything else, you try to uh, want them to want to be the best version of themselves. You know, the trick is, how do you do that? How do you get somebody to really have a switch going on their own versus trying to force them? You feel like they're responding to you and to leadership. It's not really responding to me. You know, it's, it's just uh, me just talking and sharing some of my stories. They want to know how I did it. And I'm just very frank and candid with them. And uh, you know, I think it sinks in. And, you know, it's, it's important that they find their own way. You know, I can only just provide them some of the knowledge and information that I have. It sounds like you're excited to get going with these young guys tomorrow. No, I, I mean, I'm excited to be around them, and uh, you know they're hungry, man. They want to be great. They want to be great, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a joy to be around. Them. Well, how much more does it take to get feel even wider when you're away from the group? When you spend as much time as you do with your family off the court, doing your own thing, and then you come back and you get 19 year olds, 20 year olds. I don't think you get any more wider than that. I mean, yeah. Angelo would probably be my son, right? You know, <laughs> uh, but he he wants to be great. Man. Obviously, had a successful career, and he wants to know. He wants to know how. It's not listening to the same music. It's not going out to a club. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just talking and bending his ear whenever he needs it, and uh, you know, however I can help. Are you is that, is that more satisfying than maybe you would have thought? You know. 10, 15 years ago to, to pass on knowledge, or did you always feel like it'd be fun? I always felt like it'd be fun. It's just, you know, when I was younger, 
who, I, who was I going to pass knowledge off to? <laughs> you know, I do camps and clinics for kids that are 10, 12 years old. You know, they'll listen. Who's going to listen to a 20-year-old? Um, so now, you know, my peers are more willing to listen because of everything I've done. But what have been the predominant things that can pick your brain the process and the journey and things to look out for. Not so much tactically about the game, but more so emotionally. Kind of what separates good players from great players. What happens when you know, players come in, first pick, second pick, third pick. You know, some want to have great career, careers, and some just fall by the wayside. Why do you think that? What have you seen? Is that kind of the best advice up, that you got when you were coming into the league? More off the court um, stuff? No, I, it's a little bit, a little bit, but I've been around the game so much. With my father and things like that, I've been around the game so much. And you know, when I came in the league, I was surrounded by golden greats, man. You know, I remember in 98, when All-Star game in New York, it was like, he was a kid in a candy store. You know? so I had Michael that I was playing up against, and I'd always pick his brain for stuff. But then in the locker room, I was next to Clyde Drexler, Gary Payton. John Stockton, you know what I mean, Charles yeah. Barkley. It's, it's like, you know, so I'd go around just asking everybody questions.